My dear friends, today I'm going to show you how to handle a soft cataract two ways. Firstly, by the horizontal chop technique and secondly, by a direct chop or the direct vacuum chop technique. Let's see how this goes and let's see what lessons we can learn from observing these two cases. Now both these soft cataracts were similar or identical to each other. Now case number one is handling a soft cataract using the horizontal chop technique. So we start off with the creation of a continuous curvilinear capsulorexis. Well, the ideal size to aim for would be around 5 to 5.5 millimeters. In this patient, I'm finding it difficult to control the rexus because the anterior surface of the lens is bulging. A careful cortical cleavage hydrodissection is performed, the completion of which is checked by noting the ability to rock the lens. The nucleus disassembly is now going to be attempted using a ball dialer or ball tip dialer in the non-dominant hand and an FACO probe in my dominant hand. The ball dialer is passed underneath the capsulorexis to reach the equator of the lens. The lens is then rotated to free all the corticocapsular adhesions. Note at this point that the FACO probe just acts as a kind of a counter traction device. I am neither applying vacuum or power. It is just in the irrigation mode and when you pass the ball dialer to the periphery and bring it towards the center, it will successfully complete the splitting of the soft cataract. Now what you can notice is because this maneuver is happening as a result of a, a crushing as well as a compressive force, it releases a lot of cortex which can easily be aspirated by vacuum. So there is a ruffling up of cortex every time you complete the chop. It is also very important to be mindful of the fact that you should never carry the ball dialer above the capsulorexis edge. Because if you do this and you go to the periphery and try to chop, this will create a massive zonular dialysis. Hence, a very good view of the capsulorexis edge as well as a perfect understanding of the depth and the distance is important before you attempt to use a ball dialer to create a horizontal chop. For the same reason, it will be difficult to do the ball dialer technique in a small pupil or a very hard cataract. Now let's look at an identical cataract and let's manage it by a different technique which is the direct chop technique using just vacuum. I call this the vacuum chop technique. Again, we try to create an almost identical capsulorexis. These were two eyes of the same patient. The rexis is tending to run away and therefore I use centripetal pull in order to bring it back into control. Once I've completed the capsulorexis, a cortical cleavage hydrodissection is carefully performed and a rocking maneuver is also done in order to make sure that this lens will rotate. So the power settings is just 20% here. The, the vacuum is about 300 millimeters of mercury. Now the hold is very shallow and I bury the FACO tip in a very shallow hold and carry it longitudinally to a distance. Very short burst of FACO power is given and the nucleus is predominantly held with vacuum. So once you hold it by vacuum, all you have to do is to take the sharp tip chopper and cut the soft lens like a cake. Well, the trick is to maneuver this around till you're able to get one free fragment and once this free fragment is mobilized out of the capsular bag into the central safe zone and emulsified, 
then the game is pretty much under your control. The rest of the soft lens is then systematically mobilized from within the capsular bag. Now what you notice is that while I perform this vacuum chop, there is very little cortex that is ruffled up during the chop and this is because of the fact that this uses a slice and shear maneuver rather than a compression and crush maneuver that is seen in a horizontal chop. So the two stages are completed. Now let's just sum up what we have observed. In the horizontal chop, the FACO tip is used only as a counter traction for the ball dialer. But in vacuum chop, it needs, the vacuum needs to hold the soft lens so that you can effect the chop. Also note that the horizontal FACO chop will almost always work, almost 100% of the time and does not require very high skill levels whereas the vacuum chop will require more skill and expertise to hold the soft lens and in my hands it works only about 80% of the times. In the horizontal chop the pressure point is that you do not carry the chopper over the rexus margin as this can produce zonlet dialysis. In the vacuum chop the pressure point is that you do not attempt to chop near the periphery as this can lead to either a tearing of the capsular excess edge or even the creation of a posterior capsular rent. The horizontal chop also stirs up more cortex because it's a compress and crush maneuver whereas in the vacuum chop the field is pretty clean because it works as a shear and slice maneuver. Both techniques will work well for soft cataracts and remember that whatever technique you choose is a matter of personal choice. I thank you so much for your attention.